It's going very well, Andrew. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, I'm very excited to talk to you about this movie. Um, it feels, you know, it's such a deeply personal script, and it's a script that finds, you know, some universal gay experiences even within that specificity um it also feels creepily close to the lockdown periods of covid um and on top of all that you're shooting your character's childhood home in the actual childhood home of the writer and director of the film <laughs> yeah. um how close to therapy did shooting this thing <laughs> feel <laughs> Um, it felt certainly cathartic. Absolutely, it felt cathartic. The thing that, that just gives me just such joy is that um, that it's that you go to a place and you offer up all the stuff that you are um, mining. You know your vulnerability and your you know one's own pain, and and you're offering that up with some extraordinary kind of colleagues. And it's a vulnerable place to put yourself in because, you know, the camera is right there and you're showing stuff that I kind of never thought that I would be able to show um, as an actor or as a, as a human being. Um, so the fact that you're able to take that pain and, and turn it into something that's useful to people and makes people feel seen and makes people feel like, oh, I feel connected to a part of me that I wasn't connected to before or makes them feel something is, is, is so miraculous to me. And, um, um, uh, so even though it was, uh, a painful therapy session, I'm glad that I, I did it like all good therapy. <laughs> it's, it's worth it. <laughs> well, I'm very glad to hear that. Um, you know, I know that you and Paul Meskel, uh, had known each other a little bit before shooting this. Yeah. Um, has your relationship with each other changed at all now that you've had to be so intimate, both physically and emotionally while shooting yeah, this? It has, it, without a doubt it has. And not that, that not that's not necessarily an inevitability, but in our case, yeah, we, we, we really bonded. I love Paul very much. And we have this extraordinary um, um, connection as a result of, of going through this thing together. And um, uh, I just think he's, um, well, I, he's an extraordinary actor and um, I just can't wait to see all the the work that he does in the future because he's so thoughtful and um, uh, he's without um, artifice you know and as a as a human being I just I, he's just a just a wonderful a wonderful person so yeah it's it's wonderful because it was one of the one of the most wonderful working relationships I've ever had and I've just um, gained this extraordinary person in my life too and that um, so I think we're very, both of us, very grateful to um, have had this amazing experience. It's really beautiful to hear. Um, oh, good. You know, and you, know, you said in a, a recent interview that to be emancipated from shame has genuinely been the biggest achievement of your life. Yeah. And you're playing this character, Adam, who it feels like he's still very much in the process of yeah. emancipating himself from shame and, and Paul's yeah. character as well. Yeah. Um, what was it like putting yourself back into that headspace for the um, shoot? Yeah, yeah it, it makes me emotional, actually. It, it um it never fully leaves you, I don't think, uh, or for me, it hasn't. Um, a, 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 just a, that sense of vulnerability and, and the, the kind of potency of those uh, feelings that um, I carried around for such a long time and to a certain extent do sometimes in, in uh, various moments of my life. Um, and I think what's interesting, I suppose, as well, is that the character that I play is lonely and probably isn't very um, confident in relation to where he is when he has to be physical with someone. But also Paul's character is a character who is of a different generation and is also sort of quite sex positive and forward, um, sexually more forward and confident, but is also somebody who's carrying shame as well. So I don't, th I, th I think that, 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 um, I don't know, it's insidious shame, isn't it? In the sense that 
it manifests itself in a lot of different ways. It's not just like, oh, well, you know, here I am and I feel very sexually confident, so I don't feel anything. It, it can, um, it, it's, it's a more insidious thing in that sense. And so I like the, the nuance of that. And I like that there's, um, there's, there's hope. Um, the, the thing that gets rid of shame, of course, is, is love. And I think the way they, they, they treat each other with such tenderness is, um, is really radical. It, it is. And that tenderness that that sort of seems like an, an Andrew Haig specialty in a way, this sort of the intimacy that he captures just doesn't feel like anything else on screen. Mm. And yeah. I feel like there have been so, so much conversation, especially in recent years about, you know, there being so much sex on, on screen, but he, and people have a different reaction to it when it's this kind of, emotionally intimate thing um and uh, you know what how do you think we can get more of that kind of intimacy in in well, movies and tv well it's really interesting i think what's wonderful that the wonderful thing that's happened is that uh it's safe it's a safer place to be because we have intimacy coordinators and people feel like they have a voice if they want to talk about something and once you have that safety yeah. that safety grounding there it actually allows you to be much freer because you think i know and everybody else knows what my boundaries are or what might be triggering for me or what i feel uncomfortable with or what i don't feel comfortable with and what andrew is wonderful about is 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 sort of saying because there's a lot of build-up towards a sex scene like oh we have to do that we've got to get a clothes on here's what when is the the sex scene it's on the 22nd the three weeks it's like counting down to that day in a in a way that you wouldn't really do about some of the other scenes and sex is just communication. It's physical communication. It's physical conversation. Um, and um, you have to be able to, of course, of those um, uh, things put in place, but also you have to just go, this is a scene and we have to play it and we have to make mistakes and you have to be able to have a quality of listening physically. Intimacy is about being completely aware of what the other person is doing. So you're not just going, okay, well, I have contractedly obliged uh, myself to go touch you there. And that is not, uh, <laughs> it's not real intimacy. No. It's certainly safe, but it's not um, uh, not necessarily truthful, which, we, which is the thing that we're in the business of representing. So you have to, once those things are there, it actually allows you to be a bit more um, adventurous artistically actually and you know and with a sex scene of course that manifests itself in being um more physically adventurous or at least a bit more physically in touch and i think that's he, he's just got a sensibleness about about sex scenes and on what's actually required of them or, or you know otherwise um we can't shy away from the thorniness of sex or the awkwardness of sex or the um or just the the rawness of it and the, the vulnerability of it that's what i think he's so expert in creating an atmosphere for it. and then it's up to us to to put ourselves out there and um and to really to really listen which is what you know acting it is <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first everyone the hot priest himself says listening is sexy <laughs> and i for one agree <laughs> Andrew Scott. <laughs> Andrew, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, much for joining us today. That's all our time. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you.